Greetings viewers and welcome back. As you can see our Gene Steeler is nicely base coated. I put two coats of paint on it. Again I did that off camera. Um, but as you can see I pretty much covered every area that I could with that brown color that's going to be the main undertone skin flesh color of the army. This video we're going to go over the detail, trim, all the extra little accessories and pieces that may be on your particular model. I know not everybody out there has Gene Steelers or a Tyranid army so I'm going to show you a couple different models and kind of what I'm talking about as far as covering what we're going to go over. Um, on this particular model there's a couple different things and one of the things you should keep in mind when you're doing your particular army is to figure out not only just the basic color scheme but actually pick up each one of the models and look at it and look at all the little items that are going to need to be painted sometime throughout the process while you're working on them. For example with this model we have things such as the toenails, the tips of the claws, we've got the mouth with the teeth and tongue, we've got the eyes, the little carapace shell big pieces here that are on the back. And you want to kind of keep an idea in your mind when before you even start with your paint of what you want to color everything. Just so you don't kind of run into with some of the other models, different accessories that bump into each other. Maybe you wanted to paint them the same color and now it just looks like one big colored area instead of getting kind of more of the detail that you want. And I'll give you an example here with this Imperial Guardsmen. These guys have a lot of different accessories and details on them depending on which model you pick and, and what little extra stuff you add to them such as the grenades or the little machete pouches and canteens. But these guys, you know, they have their boots, their pants, they've got a little belt, undershirt, they've got little wrist braces, headbands, hair, eyes, teeth, the gun, they've got dog tags and little, little things like that you want to kind of look at on the model and figure out, okay, I'm going to paint this gray, that's going to be green, we're going to use this for the flesh color. And that way you kind of know ahead of time what you're going to do with everything and you can kind of see perhaps how difficult it might end up being, such as the dog tags on this model are really small and if you don't have a small enough brush to get in there you're going to be slopping, you know, let's say we're painting it silver, you're going to get silver paint all over the, the flesh here, which again isn't such a bad thing when you're doing the detail work because you can always go back and cover it up later. You just want to try your best not to make such a mess so you make basically more work for yourself later. Another example I'll show you here is one of the Chaos Raptors I'm working on. His wings are magnetized, but I put them on there so I can look at the model as a whole again and kind of figure out everything that I want to paint, such as I base coated them just like the Gene Steelers Brown. I base coated this in the same green color that you see here. And basically I use bolt gun metal for all the little trim on the shoulder pads to paint the gun, the chain sword. And I use black in the little joint areas between the armor and all the hoses and stuff on here. One of the other things, other than just looking at all that and figuring out what colors you want to paint everything, is figure out how detailed you want to be. Typically, the size of your army will help you kind of dictate that. Such as with my Tyranid army, I've got about 60 Gene Steelers I need to paint and a whole bunch of other different models. So I really don't want to spend five or six hours painting one model at a time or just in general on, on each model. I want to kind of get them done as quick as possible. So that can also kind of determine the level of detail you want to get into when you're painting your models. Such as the, the Space Marine, like I said, I just kind of use some simple colors. There's a lot more detail you can get into with accessories such as on the chain sword. You have the little exhaust ports here. I could paint those a different color than the plates around it and some of the designs on the sword itself. and just little extra bolts and pieces on here. I don't typically do that because I've got quite a few of these guys and I don't want to sit here all day again and spend three, four hours on one model hitting all these little details and then also going back and covering up perhaps some mistakes that I made or some paint I accidentally got somewhere it shouldn't have been. Same thing with Grey Knights where you have very few expensive models so the army's a lot smaller. You might tend to take a little bit more time added to the fact that these guys have a lot more detail on them such as their purity seals, all the little skulls everywhere, the writing on their armor, they've got little books and wings and different swords and all these little add-on accessories, the storm bolters and then you got the force weapons which you see some kind of colorful schemes out there for painting those and perhaps I'll go over that in a way later video after this series and I start getting into some of the advanced painting techniques but you can kind of look at the model ahead of time again and pick out okay well you know I've only got five terminators I need to paint I can take a little bit more time and add some more detail and a lot more variety of color in here rather than painting again 60 gene stealers and trying to do as much detail as possible I want to get them looking good but I'm not going to again spend all day painting one model so I've kind of showed you a little bit of what I'm talking about with that. So this is the Gene Steeler again as it's base coated with just plain brown on everything. And this is what I'm trying to end up making it look like to match all the other ones. And I'll again explain the whole uh, the quantity versus quality uh, in detail. 
there's very few colors on this model. I've, after the big brown color, I paint all the little pieces black that I want to paint, just the little carapace pieces, the fingernails, the toenails, and pretty much that's it for the black. I'll put some on the top of the base since I did use black sand for this. I'm, the parts that show through, I don't have to worry about it kind of showing through the different grains of sand as much. And then after that, the black, I got some green eyes in here with a little lighter green dot for kind of the pupils. I've got pink inside the mouth and the tongue and then the teeth are a bleached bone color as well as the rending claws. There's not a whole lot of detail on here. The wash is kind of what helps the, the little characteristics in here stand out. And again, I'll cover that after this video. I'll go over washes and basic uses for those and, and kind of give you a little bit better example than just the gene stealer here of what they can do for your army and how much they can how much better they can make them look. So again, quantity versus quality when you're doing your detail work, look at all your models, figure out the colors you want. So these are just some basic troop choices and small little tidbits of an army. If you have something such as a special character, an HQ choice or something like this Abaddon model, you tend to take a little bit more time, not only just because there's one model to paint, but also because these guys usually have a lot more detail on them, such as the fancy little sword. I added this pile of skulls, but this didn't really take much to paint. All those little chains and hoses and designs and skulls everywhere, his hair, face, eyes, mouth, all the little spikes on his back with the little tips and all the little skulls and helmets, the shoulder pad adornments, the cape that I added afterwards. All this stuff you got to kind of think about beforehand. I mean, you look at the pictures on the box and it's all grand looking and you, and you got these visions of painting it up like that. But when it gets down to it, sometimes you don't always have the amount of time it might take to get that kind of detail in there. If you do, then that's great, and, and keep on trucking and do it that way. But for the everyday gamer or somebody that's trying to do this in between work and school, again, you don't have a whole lot of time to dedicate painting you know, a couple hundred models, taking several hours on each one. We want to get them done as quick as possible. So picking out your colors ahead of time will get you a little bit more ahead of the game in terms of being able to paint your models and getting getting them caught up to the standard that you want them painted and getting them done quickly again using that assembly line process I explained earlier so if I have six gene stealers at one time that I'm painting I base coat all of them one one to six put on the second coat one to six and then when I start doing the the black paint for such as the carapace pieces on the model I do them again start at number one go to number six when I'm finished and I've got all the black on there, I can kind of see the areas where I went over a little bit, touched on the brown, and I'm going to cover that up. And usually what I'll do for that, as far as when I get to painting this guy, if I get over and I kind of, let's say I get a little bit of black paint on the arm, when I showed you the thick versus thin paint, you don't want to thin it down very much, if at all. I typically don't on my Gene Steelers I've been painting. When I slop the black paint everywhere, I don't want it to be black. It's typically a hard color to cover, but if you use the paint in its full thickness, just straight out of the bottle, and swab it on there, it'll cover it pretty nicely. You just want to kind of spread it out, make it even, just so you can't see it through the brown paint again, and you'll be fine. But I wouldn't worry about doing that right away. Get all the parts done, such as when I start painting this, I'm going to get all the black parts on here done. Once it dries, and I've gotten through, you know, again, one through six, I'm going to look at it and say, okay, well, I've made all these mistakes, and then I'm going to go back through from one to six, covering each one of those little spots. Go over the entire model and look at it. Make sure that the part that you kind of slopped on there and got that, the paint that you got on there that you don't want, make sure you take your time, look at the entire model so you don't think you got everything. You get on to the last step, you're getting ready to put some washes on, you go, oh no, I forgot another spot. Now you've got to cover that up, let it dry again, and you've kind of hindered the process a little bit. So take your time when doing the detail work, but don't be afraid to make mistakes. They're going to happen. Don't let that frustrate you and make it worse, and then you start making more and more mistakes, and then it gets harder and harder to cover up. Just take your time, go through, hit your details as quickly and, and safely as you can without making a mess, and go on to the next model and the next model until you get to the end. Start back at the first one with the next color. So once I paint all the black details on here, I'm going to move into the pink for the mouth. And what I'm going to do is I'll actually kind of swirl a bunch of pink down in there, even over the teeth and the tongue, and get that whole mouth pink. Go through again all six models. Once that's dry, then I can just take the brush and kind of dab my color for my teeth on there over the pink, which obviously it's going to color the, cover the pink color, and it'll show the details of the teeth a lot better so you can see what I'm talking about here. I painted that whole mouth pink and then again went over it and did the teeth individually afterwards so it worked out perfectly and then of course when I put the wash it made the details pop a lot better and the tongue again stayed pink you can still see the main color through it it just kind of tones it down just a little bit and then the color that I used on the teeth is the same as I used on the rending claws here so 
I'm not going to paint this for you on camera because you can kind of tell pretty easily on these guys how it's going to end up going. When you're doing your trim work, such as again on the Chaos Space Marine, for like the trim on the shoulder pads here, you don't want your paint really watery because what's going to happen is if you start painting that and you tilt the model to turn to a different angle, that paint's going to start to run and it's going to come down and cover this green area. And it's going to be, again, you can cover that up, but it's you're going to end up having to do the whole model all over again because you're going to have paint everywhere. The color that I use for this particular model is the Bolt Gun Metal from Citadel, and I don't water it down at all. I use it in its full thickness. I just get just enough on the tip of the brush that I need and just drag it on those areas so if it's thick it's going to stay put where you want it. So keep that in mind as well when you're doing your detail work on here. If you have like some sensitive areas or really small or maybe kind of close to something you don't want to make a mistake or mess up on or have paint run over, don't water your paint down so much. You water it down just a little bit to the consistency you can use it, but that it's not going to run as you're twisting this model around, trying to get to all the areas, turn it upside down and all that, because you're going to turn it back the right way, look at it and go, oh man, I've got you know more of a mess on my hands than what I started with. So just those are some tips to be cognizant of while you're painting. I know this may not have seemed very helpful as I wasn't painting the model for you, but that wasn't the intent of this series was it's just to kind of give you an idea and some tips and tricks on how you can get your stuff painted, get your army looking good, get it on the table, and get a little bit more experience with this stuff so you can start branching out on your own and trying perhaps different techniques and stuff. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to cover washes and if you found this video helpful even remotely please like the video. If you have anything else you'd like to see in greater detail or you really want to see me paint that jean stealer and put the black paint on there leave me a comment let me know I'll go ahead and put in a video where I paint them up and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.